Well, we are coming down to it. Um, we continue our look at volumes. Today we take a look at volumes by cylindrical shells, and as with the other volume problems, it is motivated by taking a region from A to B under some function f of x and revolving it about an axis. Uh, but we're not going to revolve it about the x-axis, we're going to revolve it about the y-axis. And that creates a very interesting dynamic because if you revolve this about the y-axis, you get this weird sort of a bunt cake sort of a thing. Uh, let's see. Let's clone this sucker, see if I can show this to you. Flip this thing like that. You get this weird three-dimensional thing. Um, imagine this weird three-dimensional thing, but there's like a hole in the middle because none of this is part of the cake, and and the cake has like this all the way around. It's got like this all the way around. Uh, it's got, well, it's a bunt cake. If that helps, it probably doesn't. But the process that will help is this idea that we've taken from before. Let's take an approximating rectangle and revolve that about the axis. And let's see what we get. When we revolved this way, we got tuna cans or maybe tuna cans with tuna size holes. When we revolve this way, we get paper towel rolls. It's a paper towel roll. We take a very thin rectangle, spin it around this axis, this axis, to spin it around, we get a paper towel roll. Well, what's the volume of a paper towel roll? Well, you take the piece of cardboard and you cut, 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 and you unroll the thing. And when you unroll the thing, you get a long rectangle with a very, very thin depth or thickness. I mean, this is any towel roll you've ever had in your entire life. So how do you find the volume of a towel roll? Well, you need this dimension, this dimension, this dimension. The thickness is easy. The thickness comes from here. The thickness is a teeny tiny change in X. That will surprise no one. This height is the same as this height. So this is a function value. It's this distance that's the interesting one. Where does this distance come from? Well, this distance is this distance. And that is the circumference of a circle whose radius is whatever x value we happen to pick. The circumference of a circle whose radius happens to be x. So what happens? Every one of these paper towel rolls has that volume. And we nest a whole bunch of them. We take this one, we take this one, we take this one, and we spin them all around, and we nest them inside each other. And so the volume of the bunt cake is a sum of a bunch of these things. And so what happens? We make delta x smaller and smaller so we can fit more and more towel rolls inside the bunt cake. And what happens is we get a definite integral from A to B. 
2 pi is still 2 pi, x is still x, f of x is still f of x, delta x becomes dx. This is roughly how we do things by the method of cylindrical shells. Um, generally speaking, generally speaking, if you're looking to do cylindrical shells, it's 2 pi times the radius of the shell times the height of the shell dx. Uh, the radius of the shell in this case was x. The height of the shell is normally a function value. So this is normally what we do, but this is actually what we do. What's the clue to use cylindrical shells as opposed to disks or washers? What makes this lesson different than the last lesson? The axis of rotation is parallel to the slice we take. If the axis of rotation is parallel to the slice we take, we get, we get a bunt cake. We get this. In the lesson we did last time, we rotated this way about an axis that was perpendicular to the slice we take. If the axis of rotation is perpendicular to the slice we take, we get tuna cans. But if the axis of rotation is parallel to the slice we take, we get this. I shall illustrate. With the canonical example. This is y equals x squared from 0 to 2, uh, maybe 3. This is the region that we're going to rotate about the y-axis. You get a solid. Uh, you get a solid. That solid is basically a cylinder, but carved out of the middle of it is the, the carved out of the middle of it is this hole that looks like that. So it's a cylinder, but stuff has been carved out of the inside of it. So how do you find the volume of that thing? Well, if we're rotating about this axis and we want to slice like this, well, cylindrical shells seems like the way to go. So the volume by cylindrical shells is the integral from 0 to 3 of 2 pi times the radius of the shell. Well, the radius of the shell is the x value we choose times the height of the shell, that's function squared, dx. 2 pi, radius, height, thickness. Well, I, th I think we can actually do this. The 2 pi can come out to play. x times x squared is x cubed. And the fundamental theorem part 2 says we just find an antiderivative, sub, sub, and subtract. 3 to the 4th is 81. That's over 2. 81 pi over 2. Could we confirm that with a washer method? Sure we could. Sure we could. Um, we could decide to slice this way and spin around. If we slice this way and spin around, it's pi times the integral of big R squared minus little r squared dy, because we're slicing horizontally. We would go from the lowest y value to the highest y value. Big R would be this full distance, and that's 3. Little r would be this distance. Well, 
I don't know about that distance. This distance would depend on this x value. This x value is the square root of y. So that's not bad. That's pi times the integral from 0 to 9 of 9 minus y dy. And I know how to find antiderivatives. So that appears to be 81, that's an 81 minus 81 halves, that's that. You get the same answer either way in this case. You get the same answer either way in this case. More illustration. This is negative x squared plus 4x minus 3. And we'll revolve about the y-axis just for fun. This is the region in question. The volume by cylindrical shells. So we take a rectangle, spin it around the axis. It ends up over here. The volume of a cylindrical shell is 2 pi integral of radius height thickness. Radius height thickness. And the rest is algebra. We distribute. And then we look for an antiderivative. Negative 1 fourth x to the fourth, 4 thirds x cubed, 3 halves x squared, from 1 to 3. And then we substitute. The 3 goes in. The 3 goes in, that's 27 over 3 is 9 times 4 is 36. 3 squared is 9. And then minus a negative 1 fourth, minus a 4 thirds, minus a negative 3 halves. And whatever that is, it is. That's the volume by cylindrical shells. Um, I should note here, you cannot slice this way and spin it around because the, it goes from the function to the function. So this is a situation that we cannot do by disks or washers. Shells is the approach for us. Well, what happens oh. what happens if this is your region? But your axis is this one. What happens if this is your region? And we're still going to slice this way and spin around like so. Well, how does that work? Well, it's still cylindrical shells because the axis of rotation is parallel to the slice I take. It's still cylindrical shells, 
It's still 2 pi times an integral from 0 to pi over 2 of radius, height, thickness. We just have to be careful about the radius and the height. The height's almost easier to see. The height goes from 1 down to cosine x. And the radius. The radius goes from the center of the shell to this x value. The center is at pi over 2. This is an arbitrary x. So the radius is pi over 2 minus x. This will give us the volume by cylindrical shells. We cannot do this. We cannot do this integral yet because we don't know the antiderivative of x cosine x. So a calculator will have to give this to us for now. But this is the way we would set up that volume by cylindrical shells. I just want to drive home for us. Radius, height, thickness. As long as you know the slice is parallel to the axis of rotation, 2 pi, radius, height, thickness, you are going to go far with this material. All right. Uh, the rest will happen in class. I will see you there and look forward to it.